This film is a chronicle of the battle with time. We will explain how and when a person begins to lose their beauty. What sacrifices are they willing to make to preserve it? And whether all methods used in this war are beneficial. Please look up for me. Our heroine, Irina, is having a quick photo session in a plastic surgeon's office. She is 50 years old. She has a grown-up daughter and a young grandson. Irina is hoping that the face, which clearly shows her age, will very soon only remain in these photos. While they are preparing the operating room, the surgeon seems more like a barber arranging the woman's hair using quite an unusual medium, medical adhesive. He must move her hair in order to free those areas of the skin where the incisions will be made. However, they will try as much as possible to hide the stitches under her hair. You now look like a punk rocker. Just make very narrow seams, the narrowest, narrowest seams. Unfortunately, they will be very thick. Like scarification? Ideally, by the third month after surgery, the mark should only be visible to a specialist. While Irina will be able to surprise her friends and loved ones with her youthful appearance. The operation, which lasts about eight hours, cuts out eight to ten years from her face. Here, a straw hat is lowered. You will also need to put all this in place. We'll show you that during the operation, and also already here, the platysma is weak. Here, the neck is sagging, and the joint between the neck and the chin should be strengthened. With less than a half an hour before the operation, Arina is directed to the anesthesiologist. For now, we will try to answer the question, what kind of a person can be called beautiful and who defined what beauty is? While the surgeon makes a star out of Arena, let us try and understand in more detail the reasons why our faces lose their appeal over time. We have already talked about the declining of facial muscle tone, which begins around 30, but this is not the only reason. The environment also leaves its mark on our face. Now through a few simple experiments, we will show you what causes aging, how it happens, and the ways in which it can be experienced. It is rather easy to see. For these experiments, I will need the help of my assistants, Anya and Aksana. We shall start with something that is known as photo damage and photo aging. We will show how light affects the DNA in our skin cells. We will use this thread here to represent DNA. We use the fibers to create a double helix. To do this, we need this device. We pass the string through it, this way, and turn it on. Here are two fibers that are turning into a double helix. It roughly resembles a molecule which keeps our genetic information in each cell. Now the sun's rays, which will be this gas burner. Thus, DNA and light. Now let's try to make a breaking point. As you can see, one of the DNA strands exploded. This is unavoidable as far as biology is concerned. Furthermore, there is a special system inside the cell that controls and monitors the number of such breaks. When there are too many of them, the cell triggers a self-destructing program and the cell dies. Excessive use of ultraviolet in this way kills a large number of cells, and as a result, our skin becomes thinner and wrinkles appear. This is what is called photo-aging. Of course, completely excluding sunlight from reaching the face is impossible and unnecessary. Just think about this the next time you plan on getting that beautiful tan.
In the next experiment, we will try to answer the question, why over time does our skin lose its elasticity and our faces begin to resemble baked apples? Many things lead to the loss of elasticity, but one of the main factors is changes in the quantity and more importantly, the quality of the polymer hyaluronic acid, which is part of the extracellular matrix under our skin. Hyaluronic acid maintains our skin's water balance. A single one of its molecules is able to hold up to 1,000 water molecules. In addition, it is involved in cell regeneration and ensures the correct positioning of the proteins responsible for skin elasticity, collagen, and elastin. In two test tubes, scientists prepared a gel that will imitate young and old skin. The young skin does not simply have more hyaluronic acid, but it is qualitatively different. The molecules of hyaluronic acid are polymers, and each one of them is a kind of chain, and the number of units in this chain decreases with age. Here in this petri dish, the polymer is healthier, more youthful. Anya? This is a petri dish with a polymer of lower molecular weight, and which is softer. We will now see the result. You see how it is practically beating back at the spatula. If we knock on a much older polymer, it is much softer. It bends and even gets a little damaged. How is this particular state of hyaluronic acid related to real life? Very simple. The skin, the subcutaneous layer, which contains a full-fledged young hyaluronian, looks like this. If some time passes, the body becomes old, the hyaluronic acid would decompose, and the appearance would dramatically change as well. Modern cosmetology helps individuals not to turn into dried fruit with age. Today, hyaluronic acid is synthesized in the laboratory and is administered subcutaneously by injection. This allows you to easily restore skin elasticity, fill up wrinkles, and in some cases, even create additional volume. The procedure that we have done on Yulia involves using hyaluronic acid in the mouth area. This created the volume and the contour. We carried out a procedure to increase only the upper lip. Now we see some small swelling that will remain visible until tomorrow, with the after effects lasting another six to eight months. Today, lip augmentation is one of the most popular treatments. Over the years, a person's lips lose their attractive volume, become thinner, and begin to show signs of aging. In addition, plush lips, especially slightly raised above the upper gum, actually mimic the shape of children's lips. This instinct makes men develop the desire to take care of their women. The process of administering injections of hyaluronic acid is a relatively safe method for prolonging the skin's youthfulness, but only if the procedure is performed by a qualified specialist. Still, we must not forget that the subcutaneous injection is essentially a chemical placed under the skin. If the area would become infected, you could see such inflammation that you will be dreaming of looking like you did before the surgery. And again, you need to ask, what kind of drugs are used? Are they sterile? Who controls it? For women, taking risks for the sake of beauty has always been trendy. The Queen of England, Elizabeth I, for example, used a mixture of lead and vinegar to be able to look as pale as she could, as was the fashion of her time. The mixture was toxic, and it destroyed the skin and poisoned the body. Poisons are still used in cosmetology today. For example, drugs that are used to smooth out facial wrinkles are made based on a strong organic poison, botulinum toxin. In micro doses, it paralyzes facial muscles for a few months, thus giving the skin a chance to recover. The face really becomes a little bit like a mask. The fact is that today it helps get rid of wrinkles. But during World War II, it was studied as a potential biological weapon. 
when it enters into the human body together with contaminated food. Botulinum toxin causes damage to the nervous system, respiratory paralysis, and eventually death from suffocation. But back to cosmetology. Another method in dealing with getting older is the use of something called filaments. The procedure looks like a medieval torture session. They literally stitch the face of the patient. Here is a cone and thread from polylactic acid. Here you can see that these cones have a particular diameter and a predefined truncation. These cones are just helping the tissue to stay fixed and not move down. Threads are like a framework that allows the fabric to over time slightly raise the tissue that is sagging and fix them to a new location. This way, the facial contours can be tightened and made to be clearer. The eyebrows and eyelids can be lifted up and the deep nasal labial folds gotten rid of. A year later, the thread will disappear. In its place, collagen is formed. This is because polylactic acid is a very strong stimulant for producing collagen. After the dissolution of fiber, the tissues will for some time still be held in a tightened state due to the increased collagen content in them. Collagen is the protein responsible for our skin strength and elasticity. The use of fibers is a technique that borders between cosmetology and plastic surgery, only without incisions or a long recovery period. Meanwhile, Irina, who is trying to regain her youth, is now in the rehabilitation period. It has been 10 days since her surgery. There is still severe swelling and she still needs to wear a special mask. It seems there is no part of the woman's face that was left untouched by the plastic surgeon's scalpel. First, we lifted the temporal area as well as the upper eyelid by removing the hernia protrusions and then we did the lower eyelid. After, we operated on the middle area of her face. Here, there is a type of a sandwich of muscle and adipose tissue which had sunk down. We thus raise it up slightly and fix it to the lower wall of the eye. Now, it will stay in that position for a very long time. We can say it will stay fixed there almost forever. Although Irina has already passed the most dangerous part associated with an operation of this kind, it is too early to see the results. There are always risks with surgery because, firstly, we interfere with the homeostasis of the organism and also inflict some injury. If we are talking about the face, the face has a huge amount of blood vessels and nerves which should never be injured at all during the operation. Whether or not Irina managed to cheat time, we will know very soon. In the meantime, let us return briefly to our makeshift laboratory. Right now, Maxim Skulachev, a biologist, is preparing to talk about the main reason why our skin ages. More serious than the sun is bad ecology and the lack of hyaluronic acid. Maybe next he will talk about the ways to resolve it. The main factor in aging is toxic substances, which do not come from the outside, but from the inside of our very own cells. In the experiment, this petri dish will represent a skin cell. The white pills will perform the role of mitochondria, the cell's energy station. Typically, mitochondria are busy oxidizing organic substances that enter the cell and converting them into energy. As long as our bodies and our cells are still young, this process goes on smoothly without any special notable side effects. The cell is doing well. Now we will add the time factor. We will have this solution act as time. The clock is ticking. And now, here our wonderful young cell has begun to age. What happens at this stage? Mitochondria, in addition to its primary function of storing energy, begin to produce harmful substances called free radicals. They are practically seething in this organism and are hurting her. And the worst thing is that they are distributed throughout the cell. 
Thus we see how the cell ages itself and leads to the aging of the skin. With the formation of free radicals, antioxidants can handle special substances. In our example cell, they successfully destroyed all the enemies of beauty. The reality is that we are still very far away from attaining eternal youth. The main problem with traditional antioxidants is that they do not enter the cell because the cell is surrounded by a membrane and certainly do not reach the place where free radicals are formed in the mitochondrion. Moscow State University is already working on a way to deliver antioxidants directly into the cell so that in the future, the work of plastic surgeons and beauticians will perhaps be diminished. The search for the next anti-aging agent sometimes calls for more spending than the search for drugs against cancer. Manufacturers of cosmetics immediately use the most advanced technology as soon as it is introduced in order to try to create a magic cream that will solve every problem at once. The problem is that even the best means only work on the surface of the skin. The particles are too big to penetrate any deeper. Another solution is the creation of cosmetics where the active ingredient is made up of the smallest particles. So-called nanoparticles with a diameter less than 1,000 times the diameter of a human hair. This would make it possible to deliver the necessary substances into the deepest layers of the skin. We can then target any tissue or a particular cell group or even a part of the skin really, absolutely anywhere on her can be taken advantage of. In order to produce such drugs, special equipment is required, which very few cosmetic companies own. And although there are a lot of commercials offering nanotechnology cosmetics, there are only a few that actually produce it. Pharmacology, cosmetology, and plastic surgery are definitely making headway in the struggle to preserve our beauty. But the usual decorative cosmetics cannot be simply written off. They can indeed work absolute miracles in the competent hands of a well-trained professional. Look at these people. Each of them has their own characteristics. One is easy on the eyes and slightly overweight. The other seems to have really aged a lot. The third one is thin and a bit mean. Now, pay attention. It's the same girl. Several times her features were changed almost beyond recognition with the help of the most common cosmetics. This is not professional face paint, it is makeup. This is what we have been using, cosmetics that anyone can buy from any store. In order to change the shape of the nose, eye, and even age, one does not necessarily need to refer to a plastic surgeon. A well-trained makeup artist can deal with this quickly and painlessly. A woman of 40 could easily be using makeup to reduce her age by five to seven years, or even 10. She has to darken the edges of the lower jaw to remove all the flaws. She has to darken the neck because the neck is one of the first things that gives away someone's age, as well as the hands, correction of the cheekbones, and correction of the forehead. The ability to work with light and shadow and properly mix colors and textures used to be the hallmark of makeup artists who worked in the theaters or studios, but rarely made it to ordinary people. The world is constantly changing, and now with one click you can see all the makeup that any star has had and to see how it was done. In everyday terms, this artwork is far from professionally done. This level of makeup is truly an art, and learning it despite the abundance of visual aids is not easy. 
but the chance each morning to erase a few years off one's face or change how some non-ideal feature looks is worth the effort. And now, let us briefly go back to the beginning of the film. Do you remember how our heroine Irina looked prior to getting plastic surgery? Well, this is how she looks now after three months. Yes, this is the Irina, the 50-year-old mother and grandmother. By the way, the girl sitting next to her is her daughter. Well, I think I'm a star. In any case, it was definitely worth doing it. Irina has chosen an expensive and risky way to erase the traces of time from her face and to regain her former beauty. Of course, her body continues to age, but as long as age is not yet being reflected in the mirror, she can ignore it. Maybe not forever, but today, she has emerged as the winner in the battle against time. <laughs>